Sonic, the heart of your system. It's the final day of CES, the Friday, and everything's kind of come to a crashing halt. Many companies have packed up a day early. What we expect to see is that the LVCC, Las Vegas Convention Center, is going great guns all through Friday, and people that were stationed in the various hotel suites may or may not be there on Friday, but instead it's kind of everything's closing down a day early. We think it's because it's turning into a brutally expensive show at CES. The numbers of attendees, depending on who you talk to this year, 160, 180, even 200,000 people. It's busy as heck, and it costs a fortune for companies who come here. That's just a fact. So we thought we'd come for some spiritual refreshment and have a little chat about what we've seen at this year's CES. And I'm going to hand over to Bryony, who's going to tell us what she has seen and what most grabbed her attention. I have seen many, many things. I think we've been to a lot of companies here at CES. I think maybe didn't rival Computex. I think we probably saw more at Computex, but I have seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of the RTX 20 series laptops. There seems to be a huge amount to see. Um, a lot of them seem to be thin with thin bezels. That seems to be the trend with laptops now. I think we're going to see more and more of those going in 2019. I'm sure I'm going to be there's going to be a stack of them to review throughout the year. Uh, I've also seen. Uh, my favorite things I saw, I know it's really sad, I really enjoyed the white components <laughs> at the Corsair B, so that H100i, if they do a 360mm version of that all-in-one cooler, I really, really want one. Uh, and also, I quite enjoyed when we went to see Cooler Master, that little control pad I think was really neat. Uh, it's the aim pad technology used in a different way for people that are using it professionally, and I did think that was something that caught my eye. Um, I'll hand back over to Leo and see what he found was most interesting. Well, it was, it was a real case of hit and miss. Um, we had sort of technologies. So we had the Capellix LED packaging from Corsair, for example. That's not a new type of LED. It's a new way of mounting LEDs in devices. And then the question is going to be, well, what are they going to do with it? So we'll see some RGB RAM, for example, which is great. I mean, we like that. But unless you can put the new RAM next to the old RAM and it's visibly better or cheaper or something. And they're talking, for example, about it being a lower power draw. Well, OK, but power draw in our DDR4 is almost negligible. So in the great scheme of things, that is a detail. It's going to come down to the wow factor. In terms of the wow factor, we saw a few monitors uh, that were just wowzer. So we saw it uh, a Zeus, we saw a, a professional monitor that was an inch thick that had uh, micro LEDs that was just mind boggling, but they wouldn't even talk about price. And the answer obviously was a fortune, which is also really quite frustrating when you see something you go, interested, when, how much? And it's like, the when is, ah, it's coming soon. How much? Ah, we don't know. Uh, Razer did that a little bit to us. They got uh, an OLED uh, panel and laptop that was like, yep. And again, with that, the details were very few and far between. But the immediate wow factor was huge. And uh, uh, Razer were one of the sinners who had an almost pitch black booth area. So the OLEDs were really standing out. Doing the video is slightly tricky as a result, but the, the colors were just popping in that environment. Absolutely gorgeous. Also, the Razer Synapse um, LED, uh, yes, RGB. Yes, I I which is Brian's territory. Them. Here we go. Yes, the Razer Synapse software. So they've brought a lot of companies under the same umbrella so that they work with the Razer Synapse. I really, really like that because RGB lighting has been a pain for so long. All the different companies use different software. They all interact with each other. They often conflict. But the fact that Razer have sort of worked with companies, which I don't know, sometimes Razer get a bad rap I guess, but they seem to have done this. They said it's free. The companies don't have to pay any like royalties or anything to sign up. They're just trying to get as many companies to sign up as possible. Uh, they've got 15 at the moment. They say they are working with more manufacturers, so we're probably going to see even more. But the idea that I could just click one button and all the lighting, no matter what manufacturer it is in the PC, changes at once, just makes life so much easier and makes RGB lighting make more sense to me. And I think what Razer has done there, which is diplomatically very clever, is they're not replacing the software, from example, from the Thermal Take or from Gigabyte. Their software sits above it all, it unites it. So you still need the manufacturer's software, presumably as a kind of a driver type of thing to make it work. So the G-Skill software will be in there, you just won't then use it because you'll be using Synapse as this overarching, and I hate to use the word, it ties it together in an ecosystem. Uh, the fact you then got Alexa on the side, should you choose to use it well personally. And here we have the, uh, the classic, uh, opinion poll 50 50 I am not a fan Bryony is a fan so 
there we have it, 50% in favour, 50% against. Uh, I remain to be convinced, but, you know, there we go. So we saw Zeus. We had the uh, annoyance of the Zeus doing a preview with us of a couple of their devices that we are finally able to see, and the annoyance of the preview, and they weren't allowed to talk about stuff, was because NDAs from NVIDIA. And the thing was, the NDAs from NVIDIA, it was just an open bloom in secret. I mean, we came in knowing we were going to see RTX uh, mobile and also RTX 2060 graphics, and we did. Uh, I suppose, that, as, as I predicted and Leo says, therefore it meant that uh, Intel wasn't going to bring out uh, ninth gen mobile processors because it would have mucked everybody around. Um, but we're instead going to see those Q2. Uh, and the consequence of that is, what you almost have to say is, you assume rather, is any laptop that we saw this past few days that's got eighth gen gra uh, processors almost certainly is going to have ninth gen for Computex. Hopefully they won't actually change much else. But that's also frustrating because we know it's going to happen but it means that buying advice becomes really tricky. Yes, yeah, so if I'm reviewing a laptop now and it's got an 8th gen processor and then it's got the RTX 20 graphics, it's going to be hard to recommend to buy that now. Unless you really want that laptop now, you want the 20 series graphics, you want to be like an early adopter of those in the sort of mobile platform. I think a lot of the advice is going to be, here it is, you can buy it now, but maybe wait for six months and see what happens. Especially with these like new displays as well that Razer are bringing. I just, buying a, a Razer Blade 15 now before the 240 hertz, 240 hertz display on a laptop and that 4K OLED as well. I think we have seen a lot of really nice displays actually and the wide widescreen display seems to be a sort of a theme. Yeah. Uh, I In the past I think it's been like, I don't know, you get your monitor but the curved widescreen has really been, we've seen a lot of them. It's a bit of an odd look. The fish eye? Yeah, the, the fish eye thing. Uh, we saw a huge great uh, screen at the Azus booth before I went off to see the one that I really like, the inch thick job. And uh, the, the curved screen, it looked impressive. Everything about it was right, but it was, uh, yeah, motion. Very strange to see. Um, the point Brian is making there about uh, early adopters, completely correct. The thing about uh, early adopters and, and uh, upgrade paths and this, that and the other, it's for the birds. If you need a thing, you buy it now. The idea of going to wait for prices to come down, for example, that's just not a thing anymore. Uh, it's, it just isn't. You know, do you want more memory? If you need it, you need it. If you don't, you don't. If you need it, buy it. Otherwise, wait. Uh, but when you need it, you've got to lay down the cash. It's painful to say it, but it's true. Uh, in terms of forecasts, so Brian is talking there about sort of horizons towards Computex, which is like six months away. But uh, Intel, when they did their keynote, they were talking about holiday 2019 for 10 nanometer. Now that's Christmas, basically. And the point there is the other side of Computex. It's don't even think about seeing it at Computex. And that's disappointing. On the one hand, Intel's addressing that uh, huge burning question of where the heck's your 10 nanometer boys? And they're saying, yeah, we've got this great stuff. It's all happening at the end of the year. They're saying the second week of January, they're talking about holiday 2019. So on the one hand, thank you Intel for addressing the point because up to now you've said very little. They haven't said what the issues are with 10 nanometer. They just said nothing about it. What they're saying is, yeah, yeah, we're getting it in a year. Albeit they're saying this year. Having said that, and I mean, that wasn't a promise. That was a, a vague generalization. That 28 core Xeon, we haven't seen that. That was due for release in 2018. We're two weeks in, we have not seen it at CES. We've seen boards that support it, we've seen cases, we've seen cooling systems, we haven't seen the processor. So, all right, they're only two weeks behind schedule now, but who knows when it's gonna happen? What I thought was quite interesting as well is when we stopped by to see NVIDIA and they had the sort of, uh, they were showing off the ray tracing and things again. Uh, they had a few more sort of benchmarky type things they work with 3d mark and they had like a showing the difference between uh, rtx on rtx off which we've seen before but what i found really interesting was when we were talking to the guy on the booth and he sort of explained dlss better than we'd ever heard it explained before i think there was a lot of confusion with what it actually does and i don't know if the claims they're making are true but if they are true it makes me and leo happy i think uh, and maybe they don't deserve there's been a lot of hatred around RTX. I can understand why, because personally, I think turning on something that makes the visuals better, slightly better, maybe not that noticeable, and losing like 20, 30 FPS is stupid. But with DLSS, the way they explained it, 
was that you're going to get back the performance drop from RTX by using DLSS. I mean, the fundamental thing here is that we like to think we keep up to date with what's going on in the industry. And we talk to other people within the industry. And yet we've had these conversations with you. That's what DLSS is isn't it? Because it sounds like a form of anti-aliasing. It's a way of getting, you know, kind of reducing the hit. Whereas actually it's not. The way it's been explained is it's a way of increasing performance. You render at a lower uh, uh, resolution and then you boost the resolution. You gain performance. So RTX hurts, DLS returns the performance. It increases performance. And that's a fundamental misunderstanding on our part. Uh, now in fairness to NVIDIA, they were saying that uh, they hadn't got the message across too well. Fair enough, I'll, I'll take that message, or that word, as they've said it. Totally agree, um, because I don't think they did get the message across. If we didn't get it, did the punters get it? Now, frankly, messages are messages, and we need to see it. We need to actually measure it. I'm also just going to comment, the vapors in the air here, cannabis. Nevada is rife with, it's one of the six or seven or eight states where cannabis is now legal. You walk around, adverts and billboards everywhere. It, it's, just, it's just in the wind, it's like being in the Netherlands. Most peculiar. I'm going to hand over to Bryony. I think it might be time to wrap up here. Okay, so that's the end of CES 2019. Uh, that was a quick wrap up of all the things we saw. I'm sure there's there's loads of coverage on the YouTube, so make sure to watch those videos to get even more detail uh, if you're just watching this without watching the rest of the videos. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video from KitGuru, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from KitGuru, make sure to hit the subscribe button.